Well, thanks again for the invitation. This has been a lot of fun. Yesterday, I really enjoyed, and I hope it went over well for you. And so we'll start the day today. And as you said, our neck is on the line. So we'll start with uh, pediatric neck masses. The objectives of this particular lecture are, first of all, to describe the ultrasound scanning technique, then look at the imaging findings in common neck masses, and of course, to understand the differential and provide some clues to the diagnosis. So the scanning technique, it's pretty straightforward. You put the patient in the supine position, you hyperextend the neck some by either putting a sponge, pillow, some object under the upper back. You want to use a high frequency linear array or curved array transducer because a lot of your structures are in the near field. You want transverse and longitudinal scans and of course uh, color Doppler. General facts about neck masses in children, most of them are benign. In contrast to adults, we're going to see a lot more cancers. In children, most are benign. And we can group them into three categories, congenital masses, vascular lesions, and then, of course, lymphadenopathy. Malignant neck masses do occur, but they're rare. And you'll sort of know when you see one. As I go through the lecture, I'll show you what they look like, and they'll have a different appearance from most of these other lesions. But if we start with the congenital or developmental masses, we'll divide them into those that have a cystic appearance and those that have a mixed uh, or solid appearance. So starting off with the cystic lesions, we'll begin with the thyroglossal duct cyst, which is the most common congenital neck lesion congenital lesion, it's not the most common lesion overall because that would probably be lymphadenopathy. But if you talk about congenital lesions, it's thyroglossal duct cysts, and it accounts for about 70% of those congenital lesions. Half of the patients will present in the first decade of life. You can see it, though, throughout life. The thyroglossal duct is cyst is a remnant of the thyroglossal duct. And the duct extends from the base of the tongue to the thyroid. So you can see this lesion anywhere along the course of descent of the duct. 15% of cysts will be at the level of the hyoid bone, 20% above, and most of them below the hyoid bone. So the ultrasound appearance is quite classic. You're looking for a midline lesion or slightly, slightly off midline. The more inferior the cyst is in the neck, the more likely it is to be off midline. It has discrete margins. It may be hypoanechoic. It can have a few echoes if the contents contain some protein or if they're infected. And it's avascular. So this is the higher bone. This is the midline cystic mass. That's the thyroglossal duct cyst. Lower down, we're about the level of the thyroid. Here's a cyst that's slightly off midline, but you can see the midline. It's extending from the midline. Again, thyroglossal duct cyst. You can see echoes within it. Here's another midline one, higher bone. The lesion with echoes, it doesn't necessarily mean it's infected. This can just be a lot of protonaceous material. And in this case, it was just protonaceous material. And here's the CT, this midline cystic lesion. That's classic for thyroglossal duct cyst. Second branchial cleft cyst, the next most common uh, of the congenital lesions. And the second branchial cleft cyst is the most common of the branchial cleft cyst. This results from incomplete closure of the branchial apparatus, which is present in the fetus, and it gives rise to the critical neck structures. And there are six in the, in the branchial apparatus. There are five clefts and six arches. The branchial cleft cyst arises from the second arch. That's the most common of the, the branchial cleft cyst. It's anterior to the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle, anterior lateral to the vessels. It is in the lateral neck. That's going to be your clue. 
about 8% of the branchial cleft cysts arise from the first arch or cleft, and 2% arise lower down. They're really rare, more common in adults. This is a patient with a lateral neck mass. It's cystic. There may be a few echoes because of protein within it. The classic location is lateral neck anterior to the sternomastoid muscle. Lateral neck cystic mass, second branchial cleft cyst. Here's another one, lateral neck. This is in the left neck, cystic with a few echoes. It was not infected when it was taken out. There was just protein in it. It's anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and it is lateral to vessels. And you can see on the CT, lateral to vessel, same thing we see on the ultrasound, and anterior to the muscle. Lateral neck, second branchial cleft cyst. Another malformation that's cystic is cystic hygroma, also known as lymphatic malformation. And it simply represents large dilated lymphatic spaces. Here's your clue. It's in the posterior triangle of the neck. The lesions we were just looking at are more anterior. This is classically posterior triangle of the neck. And this is the common site for cystic hygroma. 90% are detected by age two years. Most of these are present at birth. And it's a large, painless, soft tissue mass. It may enlarge or become painful over time if it gets infected or if it bleeds. It has a typical appearance, again, posterior neck, okay? Your stoner clidomastoid is behind uh, the muscle. It is multilocular. It is fluid filled. It has septations. The fluid is a vascular. The septations can show vascularity. It is in the posterior neck. Here's another one. Sternocleidomastoid muscle, posterior neck, multilocular lesion. It just extends down. This does require some additional imaging, and we usually do MR to show the full extent. It's a large lesion. It's multilocular. It also encases vessels and nerves, so it's a very difficult surgical uh, process. It's challenging, and the MR really gives information about the full extent and the relationship to vessels and nerves. Fourth cystic lesion, the dermoid cyst, and this is really the most uncommon of the congenital lesions, but you can recognize it if you see one because they arise in the sublingual, under the tongue, and submandibular locations. Cystic, and they have these very bright internal echoes, okay, due to fat. And if you're familiar with the appearance on CT or MR, it's a so-called sack of marbles. Looks like a sack with uh, these, in this case, on the MR, you see these low-density, uh, intensity structures due to fat. So... Dermoid cyst. There are a couple of more congenital masses, and they're going to look complex, cystic and solid or solid. And those will be the teratoma and the cervical thymus. The teratoma contains all three germ layers, and it is typically found in, when it's in the neck, it's typically found in newborns. It is in the anterior neck, midline, off midline, but it's huge. It can involve the entire neck. It is heterogeneous with cystic and solid components. It contains fat, soft tissue, calcification. This is a newborn with an in utero uh, mass. You can see how large it was on the fetal MR and on the ultrasound postnatal. It is a huge mass filling the neck. It has calcifications. If you see calcification, heterogeneous mass, it's a teratoma. That's your clue. Color doesn't have much color. It's got cystic components, solid components, calcification. And here is the MR. It fills the entire neck. And that's, that's sort of classic also for teratomas. They're really, really large. They present at birth, um, midline, but they extend to both sides of the midline. Cervical thymus, last of the congenital lesions we'll look at. Again, uh, it presents an infant's as a rule. 
it's an anterior, but it's a lower neck mass, your clue. We're looking at clues on each lesion. So it can be a lateral or midline. Here's another clue. Follow it down. It's contiguous with the mediastinal thymus. Eventually, it regresses. It's your leave-alone lesion. We got to look at normal thymus because you have to understand what normal thymus looks like to understand the ectopic thymus. This is thymus, okay, in the chest. And if you do ultrasound, this is thymus. It's sort of soft tissue, it's echogenic, and you see a speckled appearance with these hyperechoic foci, okay, thymus. Now, this patient is a five-year-old boy. He's a little older than some, but he has a lower neck mass. So here's the transverse view. This is thymus, okay? You got this mass in the midline, and it's hypoechoic, and you have these multiple uh, linear foci, sort of speckled appearance. In this case, when I do the sagittal or longitudinal view, here's the neck component, and this goes into the anterior mediastinum. That's a cervical thymus. It's just extending into the neck. Here's another one. It's got thymic uh, characteristics. It's solid with speckled echoes. Cervical thymus. Sometimes it can be ectopic and not be connected, but most of the time it's connected. Congenital lesions. Second category, vascular lesions. We're going to look at high flow lesions, hemangioma and arteriovenous malformations, and one slow flow lesion, venous malformation. This is the characteristic classification of vascular lesions, no matter where they are. Infantile hemangioma is really the most common, the vascular lesions, and simply uh, contains lots of vascular channels, okay? And it occurs in the subcutaneous tissues, so it's a little bit more superficial. It is the, really one of the most common uh, vascular tumors of infancy. It's the infantile form is absent at birth, and it appears in the uh, first few months of life. There is another form called congenital, which is present at birth, but more commonly, it appears a little bit later. It has this characteristic pattern where it initially increases in size, it has a proliferative phase, and then it completely envelopes. Um, you can see some bluish discoloration in the skin. So this is a infant who has a palpable mass with some bluish discoloration. And you can see that here's the skin. It's very superficial in the soft tissues. It's well-defined. It's slightly hypoechoic, a little heterogeneous. And use Doppler, okay? You see there's a lot of color. It's a vascular mass. If you do pulsed or duplex Doppler, you'll see characteristic high systolic and diastolic flow. Well-defined mass flow hemangioma. Here's another one. It's superficial. It's in the soft tissues. Here's the skin. Color flow. Highly vascular. It's got to be a vascular lesion. Systolic, diastolic flow hemangioma. Discrete mass vascular mass. There is another high flow malformation, the arteriovenous malformation, where you have multiple vessels interposed between the arteries and the veins. So it's a collection of vessels. There's not much soft tissue. It's diffuse and infiltrative. It is present at birth. It will not regress. It will grow with the child. What you're seeing now is just a group of vessels. It's really not a discrete mass. It just extends through the neck. It's simply a collection of vessels, not well-defined. If you do your Doppler, you're going to get the same pattern of high velocity, low resistance arterial flow. Sometimes it is difficult to distinguish the hemangioma and the arteriovenous um, malformation, but this one is just a tangle of vessels without much soft tissue. And there's one more, and there's this is the slow flow, low flow, venous malformation. Now you have dilated venous spaces. So what you see is this infiltrative mass in the soft tissues, 
with hypochoic spaces. Again, put your color on. It's vascular, and it's all venous. It's all venous. It's low flow. It's um, not pulsatile, typical of venous flow. So this one can increase some over time, depends on how large it is, whether they'll need to embolize it.